Very honored to have um, Mariam Sina Varghese with us today. She's going to be speaking for us. She is actually one of my good friends. Um, she's from the Indian Orthodox Church. She goes to St. Vladimir's Orthodox Seminary School, and she has a, a master's in theology. And she's also um, a, going to teach in Malayalam, which is an Indian language in um, that they speak at an Indian kind of town or city that has a lot of Christians. Um, so she's she's going to be talking with us today um, on about her, with a really, she has a really good topic, right? So um, we're actually very excited to have her. So let's please give her a warm welcome. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one true God. Amen. Good afternoon. Is everyone awake? Yes. You're not going to fall asleep, right? No. All right, let's see. Let's, we'll, we'll see in a few minutes. Um, I would like for us to sta start with prayer, okay? Of course. Uh, and for this prayer, we'll do it a little differently, uh, incorporating silence into our prayer. But during that, I would like you to focus on this icon. Of course, you know who this is. Um, focus on that icon. And I'll lead you through the prayer, okay? In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, let's bring our hearts and minds to Christ our God at this time. We are aware of our surroundings. We are aware of the noises around us, within our heads. We are aware of people around us. We are aware of our own burdens and struggles and responsibilities. In addition to the physical stimuli, there is the holy presence of God. Heaven is here. Christ is here. Scripture says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. Let's spend a few moments in silence, asking Christ to be within us, allowing us to be aware of his presence, and to bring our hearts and minds and our thoughts to him who opens our hearts and our minds. Be still and know that I am God, says the Lord. May the words of our mouths and the meditation of all our hearts be pleasing in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one true God forever. Amen. Right, good afternoon again. All right. My name is Mariam. How many Mariams are there? Yeah. All right. More Mariams than there will be in my church if I ask the same question. Um, well, great name, right, Mariam? <laughs> of course, be because of the Holy Theotokos. Um, the topic for this session is, how do I walk the walk as a lady? Okay? So I'm going to put you to work. We'll start with the question. Write down your thoughts your response to this question. What is your goal in life as a woman? I'm not going to check your answers. This is personal. You can write it. What is your goal in life as a woman? OK. Um, you can continue your thoughts later on, too. Uh, next question. What do you think is God's purpose for your life as a woman? OK. Can I ask for volunteers, please? Yes. First one, I'd say maybe um, the role model as I grow up. Like, you know, like not, not only am I too dedicated to my business side, like the educational side, the business side, but also I'm a good, like, I'm a good role model to my family. Like, I have a good relationship with them, and then I have a good relationship with God. Because if nothing balances out, then nothing's, when it's not in balance, then nothing's good. And the second one, um, I think it's more like that God, he wants us to help rule the man, like earth, like he let Adam and Eve in charge of the garden. And also, he, he created women to help, like, produce, to, to, for the gift, the, the gift of, like, not reproduction, but God, when he lets women have children, it's like a gift. It's a blessing. So God enjoys seeing this blessing. So he created us for a purpose like that, too. All right, so now, 
I wanted you to think about how you answered that question. You know, I asked, the first question I asked, what's your goal in life as a woman? And then I asked you about what do you think is God's purpose for your life as a woman? And sometimes our definitions, our ambitions, our goals are shaped by what we see around us, right? Expectations from the society, expectations from the world, expectations from the parents, and all that. And sometimes we are torn between uh, the world's definition and between God's definition of a woman, right? And we struggle, you know? We want to please God, but at the same time, uh, there are expectations in this world that we think are cool, and we cling on to them, right? And we, are, we know we should do the right thing, be that pure bride of Christ, but yet we often fail to be that pure bride of, God, of Christ, right? We struggle. So it's, there is this torn situation within us that we, we want to please God, but at the same time, we cling on to the world stand, standard. So I wanted you to see this by doing this activity, okay? Look at this chart and say the color, and not the word. Okay, let's try to do that. Read from the left to the right. Uh, say the color. Okay, we'll start together. Color, not the word. Okay, go. Is that easy? How many of you struggled? I struggled. I still struggle. I think you guys are much faster than I am. You know, <laughs> there's a part of us. Are you still practicing? <laughs> Did you see that? What just happened? Part of you wants to say the word. Part of you wants to say the color. It's kind of like that. You know, we want to cling on to God, but at the same time, we want to be cool in the world standard, so the other part of us says, okay, cling on to this. So we are torn somewhat. So I just wanted to see that struggle. This is similar to uh, how, what our lives are, like our spiritual life and our life in this world. But, you know, and often we are shaped, like I said earlier, we are shaped by the societal pressures, you know, but yet we are called to more than that. We are, we are called to a higher standard. And the more we expose ourselves to the world and all the expectations of the world, the more we practice that, we start thinking like that. And it's hard to say the color, you know, like that. It becomes more ingrained in us. So that's why we have to balance it, not just balance, but actually uh, be more uh, equipped with what the church teaches us. So we'll have to look into examples from the church. Examples from the Bible. So um, I'm going to ask you for examples of women in the Bible. Can I get some names? Saint Mary, Ruth, okay. Esther, Esther. Saint Mary, Abigail, Rahab, Samar Samaritan woman, Deborah, okay. Esther, Esther. Mary Magdalene, oh, Martha. All right, okay, okay, good, good, good. You guys are warmed up. Um, I'm going to show you some pictures. Let's see if we can uh, identify these. I mean, some are pictures, some are icons. So let's go through them. Who is this? Mary Magdalene, right? It's a, it's a resurrection scene. OK. Who is this? Martha and Mary, right? OK. Samaritan women, right? Do you remember the story behind it? The adulterous woman, yes. Where uh, Christ says, let him who has no sin cast the first stone, right? That, that story, okay? Who are these? Okay, the women at the tomb, right? Who came with the incense of fragrance, right? Okay. Who is here? I know it's not in the Bible, but it's early church history. Yes, I heard the answer. Queen Helen, right? Okay, King Constantine's mother. Okay, she's associated with the 
finding of the Holy Cross, right? Okay. Who is this? Which woman do you see here? Sarah, right? You see the three, the three men, the three angels? Abraham and Sarah. It's called the hospitality of Abraham. Got, it's got it? Right? Who is this? <laughs> Everybody knows that. <laughs> Who is, which woman is here? Eve. Eve, right? You see Eve? It's this icon. Are you familiar with this icon? Okay. This is the resurrection. You know, Adam, it's through Adam that we sinned or we fell away from God. But through Christ's resurrection, he brings Adam back up, right? He pulls Adam and Eve out of the grave, giving them life. So the second Adam, Christ, gives life to the first Adam, Adam and Eve, right? So Eve is being brought back up. So everyone is given life through Christ, okay? All right, next. Who is this? Okay. The woman who washed. Uh, Christ's feet, right? Who is this? Samaritan woman, uh, whom we name to be Saint Fortini, um, and that's her, the woman at the well. Who do you think this is? Ruth, okay. It's the same. Um, Ruth and Naomi, okay. All right. Who are these? Elizabeth and Mary, St. Mary, right? Okay. Phoebe. <laughs> Phoebe, right? Okay. And, of course, St. Mary the Theotokos. You see how many saints there are in the Bible, in the early church? And these are just a very, very few of them. And there's something we can learn from the lives of all these women saints, right? They also were women just like us. They struggled to live faithful lives, but yet they were faithful to God. And ultimately, we have St. Mary here, you know, the Theotokos. What, what, is, what does the word Theotokos mean? Mother of God, but more bearer, God-bearer, right? The one who carried God, God-bearer. So I would, I'm choosing her to be our role model. I, I, I know that none of you will disagree. <laughs> uh, she is a role model. And what, what did she do for us? What did she do for us? She brought Christ into this world, right? So I'm going to say your calling in life is to be Theotokos. Okay, it might sound a little heretical, right? Okay, not a capital letter T, but small letter T. Your calling in life is to be Theotokos, to bear Christ and bring him into this world that is so in need of Christ's love. That is your call. Not to physically bear Christ like St. Mary did, but to bear him. And we have already received him, right? How did um, St. Mary receive um, how, wh what was the beginning of her acceptance? How did she find out about the angel came, right? What did the angel say? How will she conceive? The Holy Spirit will come upon you and, and, you, and she, she will conceive and she will bring Christ into this world, right? Have you received the Holy Spirit? When? baptism. So the Holy Spirit has come upon us as well, right? So from there, our journey with Christ began. We began our journey with Christ through baptism. And now our calling is to be God bearers. And I want you to see that each one of you are called to this. And each one of you are unique and special in the sight of God. So I want for us to all read this passage together. Can you all uh, see this okay? Okay. Um, we will read this together, but when, as you read, 
Make this personal. Okay? Think about the words that you're reading. Feel it. Okay? You are unique and you are called to be uh, God bearers, to bear Christ. And God has a special and unique purpose for you. So let's try to read this together. Can we start? For you created. one of you. God has a special purpose for your life. Okay? So when we come together, you know, as sisters, we are helping each other realize this and to help each other be faithful in this calling to fulfill God's purpose for us. And our calling, wherever we are, is to bear Christ and bring him to this world and to bring Christ to those around us, right? Right? <laughs>